Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. President Trump's travel ban officially went into effect just a few seconds ago. We'll get to that momentarily. But first this morning, Washington melted down. You may have heard about it. Not because war broke out or the economy collapsed. Worse, the president tweeted something nasty about cable news hosts. In case you're returning from New Zealand tonight and missed it, here's what he wrote. Quote, I heard poorly rated Morning Joe speaks badly of me. Don't watch anymore. Then how come low IQ crazy Mika, along with Psycho Joe, came to Mar-a-Lago three nights in a row around New Year's Eve and insisted on joining me? She was bleeding badly from a facelift. I said no. Well, that was it. Chaos erupted. Democrats in Congress rushed to the nearest microphone to express shock and horror and call for the president's resignation. I think it's so blatantly sexist. I don't even know that there's a question about it. Uh, but uh, sad to say, I am still the highest ranking woman. I thought that was all going to be resolved in November. Uh, instead, we have a person in the White House who not only is, doesn't happen to be a woman, uh, but happens to disrespect women. That's too bad. You spend your time in the morning dealing with attacking human beings that happen to be Americans and happen to be the media. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. President. I've gone through, as a member of the Judiciary Committee, impeachments, but we can't wait that long. It is time for you to resign. Well, meanwhile, over at CNN, you would have thought a new ISIS torture tape had been released, except worse, because it was Trump. The man who, in his life and in the campaign, has acted like a misogynist, a sexist, a sexual predator. He is just not a decent human being. This is objectively a statement from the highest office in the land, from the president that objectifies women. This is a statement that is cruel. It attacks a woman's appearance. This dude, this disgusting dude, is the president of the United States and says, listen, you crazy lunatic 70-year-old man, baby, stop it. You are now the president of the United States, the commander in chief, and you need to stop acting like a mean girl. Got that? Because Trump attacked one woman, he attacked all women. He's a sexist because he's acting like, quote, a mean girl, which is suddenly a feminist thing to say, despite the fact it's an attack on girls. Okay, so what is this really about? Well, first, Trump is fighting back. The media suggests he's a mentally ill criminal. He calls them on their facelifts. He's a brawler. They're shocked by that, but they shouldn't be. There's something else going on, though. Trump doesn't play by the rules. He's a threat to the people who make and enforce the rules. In this case, the media establishment here in Washington. They hate him for that, and for good reason. They pretty much said so out loud today. I can tell you working overseas in war zones, you know, people are emboldened by the actions of this administration, emboldened by the all-out sort of declaration of war on the media. There are people in the country who don't understand that, that this is a cynical reality TV game um, and are going to hear over and over again from the president that the reporters, journalists are enemies of the state. And someone, I mean, God forbid, but someone is going to do something violent against journalists in, in, in a large way, and then I know where the fault lies. In other words, disagreement equals violence. If you criticize me, you're a physical threat. I feel unsafe. You must be silenced. First they came for Morning Joe. You've seen this gambit on college campuses for years. It's how liberals silence dissent by conflating contrary opinions with violence. If it's strange to see middle-aged reporters in a studio in Washington fretting about their own safety, it shouldn't be. Passive aggression is the universal currency of the left. Nothing is more empowering than victimhood. It won't be long before NBC's entire White House unit claims affirmative action status. So the left's response to this is predictable and silly. No surprise there. But that is no defense of these tweets. They were stupid and they were counterproductive. They achieved no policy objective. They elevated a televised sideshow to cultural icon status. They brought joy to the left while embarrassing the president's supporters. They allowed liberals to crow about the degradation of the public square, even as they financed their campaigns with donations from Hollywood sleaze merchants. Let's be totally clear about this and not lie about it. The left doesn't hate Trump because he's vulgar, though he is. They applauded when Barack Obama vacationed with rappers. They think Lena Dunham is an artist. They hired Kathy Griffin. No, they hate Trump because he's a nationalist who says the interests of America and its people ought to come first. And that's fine. Let them hate him for that. The rest of the country loves it. That's the real tragedy of today's tweets. They were a diversion. 
When the president talks about the people who elected him, he wins. When he talks about himself, the left does. The president was not elected to pick fights with TV hosts. He was elected because he promised an agenda the country actually needs, but nobody else but him was offering. So in case he's watching tonight, here's a quick recap of what the campaign was about. Secure the border, keep America out of pointless wars, replace Obamacare with a system that expands affordable coverage for the middle class, bring jobs to the heartland, push back against the vultures on Wall Street. That's how people voted for Donald Trump. That's what he ought to do. If the press doesn't like it, ignore them. If members of his staff try to divert his energy to other agendas, fire them. Rarely has a president been elected with a clearer message, a clearer mission, restore the middle class. If he sticks to that, he will win. If he doesn't, he won't.